All right, so I decided to lay out the tools that um, I used to replace the fuel filter. Uh, so you needed a 10 millimeter socket with an extension. This is, I believe, a six inch extension with a 10 millimeter deep socket. That helps to get up through the holes in the cover and to uh, loosen them up. Uh, as I mentioned, or will mention in the video, I needed to clamp off a couple of the hoses, both the out of the fuel pump and out of the filter. So um, these are the ones that um, I've now have good experience in using and I really like them. Interestingly, this is the same style the Mercedes instruction manual uh, specifies as using as a hose clamp. You'll see other videos of various other hose clamps being used and tried. I got these at Harbor Freight, pretty cheap. Um, I'm sure you can get them elsewhere, but good value. It's like a set of four um, different sizes. Uh, the screwdriver is this Phillips, Phillips um, number two, used to uh, loosen the bracket that clamps the filter um, to the bracket and to the, secures it to the car. I have a long flat screwdriver blade uh, because the plastic cover, um, uh, you know, I didn't want to pull it hard for fear of cracking it. So I just kind of used that to kind of wedge the tab off of the, the, the bolt studs. A uh, drain pan. Um, to, uh, oh yeah, those two are the metal washers. So a drain pan uh, to catch the, the fluid. And since I'm gonna be under the car, I've learned to always bring like some sort of a tool tote under the car with me, with my tools. Um, but certainly I wish I knew exactly what tools I would have needed before starting the job uh, because I probably crawled in and out of the car, underneath the car probably a half a dozen times looking for the right size wrench or you know, putting stuff away. So certainly um, lesson learned. Uh, if you can figure out all the tools you need ahead of time, it just makes for less back and forth. I'm going to take a little slower close-up of the actual filter that I did, did buy. So that's the information about it. Now, what did my old one look like? I'll pull it out. So this is what it looked like. With the Mercedes logo, this looks like it's a, I guess, genuine. But I honestly don't know, so the arrow is important, because that's the flow of the fuel. But interestingly, when you actually do put it together, it really goes only one way. Um, the fittings only go a certain way, so there's really no way to, to muck it up and put it backwards. Uh, thankfully. Um, yeah, there was no date stamp anywhere on here. I was hoping to get, I know, a date stamp on it, but all I have is this to go on, go off of. So um, I guess I could try to track down this number and this filter. I don't know, that 04, what it means. But, um, Again, it was a replacement pro, uh, preventatively. I wasn't having known issues. So I think that pretty much does it uh, in terms of the tools um, and techniques that I use. And I'll supplement this and put it ahead of my video um, so you guys will know. Thanks. Uh, today was the project day for the um, fuel filter. So... Um, I ordered this particular Bosch replacement and uh, I'll put the details somewhere. I only have 15 minutes of camera time. My iPhone battery was dead so I had to uh, come and get my other camcorder. So uh, I had to buy these ramps because I had to jack up the back of the car. I didn't want to take off the tires. So always uh, do your best in safe carjacking. 
So I have these Rhino ramps. My backup is jack stands underneath the jacking points. So always be uh, lifting up your car safely. Uh, let me get underneath the car here and uh, show you what I did. Uh, fuel filter. So on this Mercedes C280, um, I'm in the rear of the vehicle and it's on the right side just beyond just in front of I guess that would be the rear axle okay so I'm gonna scooch back here now I'll, sh I'll show you there's this protective cover that goes up and I was so surprised I'll uh, try and take another video of uh, what the old Bosch I mean the old fuel filter looked like but oh my goodness this place this was so clean up here no rust uh, I'm really impressed um, there's this screw right here so you have to so quickly I'll try to go through so this was a unique filter so this filter uh, layout and structure is a lot different than the other YouTube videos that I saw on the internet so um, there sort of is this brass line that connects to the, that's the in. So uh, the outboard side of the car is the in from the pump. And uh, it's all threaded, uh, very unique. Uh, I think you can actually see what I'm getting at here. Um, you can see the connection. It's quite fascinating. Um, right there, I'll try and do an arrow. So there's only two, uh, two lines in this filter. Compression fitting on this side. On this side, uh, focus. I'm not gonna say what the other guy says. Um, you'll see that I had to get two new, the in with, so the, uh, the replacement filter did come with a, uh, two replacement, I think they're copper washers. So, uh, uh, one on underneath the head of the bolt and the other one between the uh, um, connection and the filter. Uh, my housing is in great shape. I'm very lucky to say that this housing is doesn't have any rust. This is a car from Texas that I imported up here to Wisconsin. So we'll see how badly the winter gets uh, causes this. But there was no rust. That screw this screw right here to loosen up the clamp right there that screw with the red head very easy all my connections were easy no rust I'm very lucky uh, what I did was there was another YouTube video that uh, advised before you undo any of your connections that um, ha start the car have it running and then uh, I pulled the uh, uh, fuel pump fuse uh, so that was, uh, I'll try and, I'll see if I can link his video, uh, with mine so you can get a sense of, I'm piecing together, so his fuel filter was a lot different than mine. Um, my fuel filter when I poured, uh, the, uh, the, the, the gas out was clean on both sides, so I don't know how, how old my fuel filter was, um. I just because I didn't know and uh, it I have 94,000 miles I just decided that it was important to um, change it so right in front is my fuel pump so what I did was I used uh, hazard fart or Harbor Freight uh, hose clamps I uh, clamped one right here so I just I took I took the hoses off of these clamps remove the hose I put one hose one hose clamp here and then I did another one on this big big hose because that's coming from the gas tank right so this is this is supplying gas from the tank and pressure so I, I clamped it um, like right here somewhere here or here um, I squeezed my hoses they're still in good shape pretty soft so I, I clamped off my hoses um, after I pulled the fuse and the car stopped running and then I turned the ignition off, uh, I didn't want to have it in the run position. 
Uh, I didn't want to have to call any electricity to the pump, I suppose, if that matters. Um, I did have a, a tub um, to, to catch any gasoline that were to fall and spill. So uh, I did have that underneath this area. So I started to loosen um, this connection first. I cracked, well, I actually cracked both um, just to kind of crack it so that um, it was easy to do it when I had to do it real quickly. I did um, loosen this one off completely, pulled it out, and let the fuel, I held my tray up to the top to catch the fuel. Then I uh, waited for that to slow down and, and to stop, and then I went and um, loosened up this connection. And uh, again, I removed the hoses from these spring bracket clamps. Pulled it out. Um, I was lucky this factory installed protective sleeve, which helps to apply pressure and keep this secure. It was in good shape. I just, I just wiped everything down. There's some fuel that dripped around, so I just wiped it down. Um, what else did I do? Um, as the other video would describe, there are um, one and two right there and right where is it where is it it's a wide angle lens where's that other stud oh where did it go Am I, can you guys see it in the video I'm looking right at it and I can't see it where it is in the film there it is that one right there. So three three mounting points. Uh, that looks like I don't know, copper or brass, so it's definitely not rusting. Um, and then this is the uh, uh, this is plastic. So don't over torque it. All right, it's ten millimeter. Don't over torque it. Um, so I'm gonna put this cover back on. Just re just reverse the steps. I'm trying to think of anything else that I. I do well um, I did hold this nut while I was tightening this so I did do that by goodness the old fuel filter the size was the same on both ends uh, I had to use a 7 8 wrench on this one um, I used a flare nut wrench on this one because it was a compression fitting I didn't want to strip it so I used a flare nut wrench over here held that tightened it I used over here on this side. Uh, let's see here. There, that's a good view right there. I can just hold it. Um, so this nut was uh, 17 millimeter, and this was I think 19 millimeter. Held it. Used a socket tight. Tried not to twist and contort this bracket because everything was kind of moving. So just kind of had to use my feel. Didn't uh, use a torque wrench. Uh, so while I'm under here, I should check the quality of my my uh, boot. Uh, it's not too bad. Not too bad. Um, anyhow. Um, I guess that's it. It's going to put it back together. I did start the car. Interestingly, um, so after I put it all together, I checked for leaks. I used a sh blue shop towel while the car was running just to see if there was any uh, leaks, and there weren't any, so that's good. Um, what was the other thing I was going to say? Oh, the car didn't want to start right away, and that kind of made sense because the fuel line was probably depressurized and empty and maybe no fuel at the injector level. Um, so I didn't want to keep turning the car over, so it, it didn't start right away. I turned it off, waited a few seconds, and cranked it again and then it did it did eventually turn over and start I let the car run for um, about a minute and then I turned it off waited five ten seconds turned it back on everything seems to be working um, I did hear some noises when I was under here checking the leaks while the car was running getting my full dose of carbon mean oxide uh, monoxide um, and uh, it sounded like this was sort of filling 
with fluid and saturating or whatever the media is in here. That's kind of, I just heard some bubbly, gurgly, slurpy noises. And that went away after about five, six seconds. And uh, I didn't hear it again. So I don't know if there's any other pearls of wisdom. But certainly, um, definitely have to use and get the right part number. Um, I bought my filter before I actually took it apart and the cover down to see what mine actually looked like. I hope it's the right part. Um, in my software, it did show that uh, I had a couple options. This was my best guess, and uh, the car ran. So I'll drive around the block tomorrow just to make sure it all works. So if it doesn't, I'll see you again, and I'll explain why. Um, that's it for now. going to put it all away. Bye.